Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Cheryl Selman, and welcome to The Love Code. This program is designed to uplift and inspire and transform and heal you. So I am so glad you're joining us for another opportunity to, well, just keep loving ourselves and loving who we are, loving the world as it is. If you are visiting for the first time, I want to welcome you. I also want to let you know that there is a special telephone number that you can call and you can leave me a message. You can give me some feedback. You can make requests. You can let me know how you're going with some of the techniques and strategies that I have been sharing with you on The Love Code. I would love to hear from my listening audience. It's good to know there's somebody out there listening. So here is the number. It's 862-800-6805. And just leave a brief message. Take a moment um, just to say hi if you'd like. I, I would really love to hear from you. If you um, And if you are interested in getting the love code and you're not able to listen live, the show is archived. And one of the best ways for you to receive the archive shows is to either go to my website, drcherylselman.com, and opt in there because I send the shows out to everyone on my list. Or you can go to my Facebook page, which is What Women Must Know. And... Uh, I post all the shows there as well, along with other great information. And if you're wondering why my Facebook is called What Women Must Know, it is because my other show on Progressive Radio Network every Thursday at 4 p.m. is What Women Must Know. So I have two wonderful programs, and you'll get both of them sent to you if you either opt in to Dr. Cheryl Selman or go to the Facebook page, What Women Must Know and Like Me There. And I'd love to have you join my community. This is all about getting empowered, expanding our horizons, and really being able to live the life we were meant to live. So lots of opportunities to keep learning, healing, and growing. Today, we're going to be talking about transforming your business into a healing environment. And I have two wonderful guests who will be joining me, Richard Rogers and Emric DeSormo. I hope I've said that Emric correctly. I've been practicing from London. So we have these wonderful, inspiring guests coming all the way to us from London. So let me just say a little bit about my guests, and then I will introduce them onto the show. Richard Rogers is currently a business owner of a number of successful businesses in the UK. He is a qualified accountant and has worked in the corporate world for a number of senior roles. He has been the project director for a number of multi-million pound projects. Richard spent a large part of his life chasing contracts and building profitable businesses, but in the last few years, he started to feel that there was something missing in his life. His search for what this could be led him to Dr. Amaster Shah, who has helped him transform so many aspects of his personal, family, and business life. Richard is now a teacher at Master Shah's Tao Academy, allowing him to share all the wisdom and teachings to help and empower people to, to also improve their lives. Today, Richard contributes to run all, continues to run all his businesses along with Being a teacher at Master Shah's Tao Academy, he is pleased to say that the gap in his life has now been filled. And Emmerich Disarmo is an independent consultant who has been based in London for over 10 years. He has been working with the FTSE 100 clients, including the largest worldwide broadcaster, BBC, the Japanese multinational imaging firm, Canon, and the world's largest steel producer, our seller, Mitta, and in recent years, he has successfully combined a 15-year career in advising on corporate governance and compliance with his study, practice, and teaching of well-being techniques. Since 2017, he has run a series of meditation classes to family members, friends, and Londoners. In 2018, he began conducting classes in a corporate context, holding weekly meditation and body tapping workshops for employees of multinational companies. In 2019, Emmerich 
has recently established a well-being hub in a business park based in West London. The hub holds weekly drop-in sessions applying Dr. Master Shah's techniques to assist employees in relaxing, harmonizing, and energizing. His mission is to enable working people to reduce stress, improve creativity, and realize their highest potential in a more demanding environment. So we're going to have this great conversation and talking about how to transform business, how to create a business environment into a healing environment. So I'd like to welcome Richard and Emmerich to the show today. And hello, hello from hello. South Oklahoma to, to Londoners. Hello, Dr. Cheryl. How are you? I am I am so well. I'm so glad both of you are with me. I just want to give my audience a little background, if I may. In November, this last past November, I was invited. Well, this past November, I actually had an interview on my other show, What Women Must Know, with Dr. Amaster Shah, who I did not know at the time. And we had a lovely interview, and uh, he shared a lot of his teachings and special programs and chanting he was doing at that time. And after our interview, he called me, and he generously, graciously invited me to attend his retreat that was happening in Toronto in about 10 days, which uh, which I accepted. And while I was there, it was a, a, a truly life-changing experience. I got to know more about Dr. Master Shah and what an incredible uh, person he is, What truly a, a grand master on so many levels as a healer, as a as a spiritual teacher, he's a master with uh, Qigong and, and uh, Tai Chi and calligraphy and acupuncture and a medical doctor, and the list goes on and on. He has incredible abilities and uh, a very profound channel to spirit. And uh, it, was a, it was a turning point for me. I, I learned so much, and I um, have been very touched and moved by what I experienced in that time with Dr. Master Shaw. So the the love code came out of that time, the two weeks I spent with him and many of his students and people like Richard and Emmerich and uh who were very inspirational and I uh, you know Master Shaw is all about being of service, being of service to humanity. And I thought what better way can I be of service to humanity than to have a show dedicated to spiritual truths, to uh, healing modalities, to bringing in the teachings, not just from what Master Shah is bringing into this world, but through the many extraordinary people that I have an opportunity to bring onto the show to uplift and inspire and heal. So that's the history. And when I met Richard and Emmerich at that retreat. Uh, we, you know, so certain people you just kind of find yourself gravitating towards, and uh, I was certainly connecting with Richard and Emmerich, and we had some great conversations. And I was so inspired at what they were doing and how they were bringing these spiritual concepts and principles and tools into a business environment, and how it's transformed their own personal lives and also transforming. And well received in very traditional business settings, which uh, you probably can't any can't get any more traditional than in um, in uh, the financial district and multi 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 corporate environments um, in London, I would imagine. Yes. So um, so I'm going to invite Richard to come on first and share a little bit, if you. Will Richard of you know your journey and you're a successful business person, extremely successful business person, but but there was more that you were looking for in your life. So why don't you just share a little bit about you, who you are and your journey and what's changed for you as you've opened to this spiritual dimension? Oh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Cheryl, and it's a real real honor to be able to to share, share my journey and my experience uh, with Master Shah and my experience prior to Master Shah. Uh, because for me, I was always in the, in the business community. I never, I never really had any spiritual contacts. My friends weren't really spiritual. My, my family wasn't really spiritual. So my whole goal in life was really to, to, to develop my business skills, 
um, and to develop businesses and to, in a way, chase chase those pound notes or dollar notes in 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 America at any expense. I was driven to 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 make money, to build businesses, really at any expense to to my health, my family, my friends, and I was totally focused on on the need to win contracts, the need to compete with people, the need to be better than my competitors. And those sort of traits are, are, are fine in business. And as I said, I was chasing these pound notes. And for some, some time, I couldn't really catch them. Right. Well, I could catch them, but I couldn't hold on to them. So eventually, I started to catch them and hold on to them. And I thought, wow, this, this is the moment I've been waiting for where I could get like the, the car I wanted, uh, the watch I wanted, the pen, and all those things that come sometimes with disposable income. And to be honest, what I thought, thought and what I felt was when I got to that stage, it would be it. I would be complete. <laughs> I, I would then be able to just continue and live my life knowing that I achieved my goals. But what happened was a little bit of that happened because it's nice to have a nice car and a, a nice watch. But there was a gap. There was a gap which I, I didn't know what it was, but I knew I hadn't really achieved what I was hoping to achieve. So because I didn't have a spiritual background, I, um, I started leaving the house with my suit and my briefcase, and I'd sneak out to the mind-body soul shows. Uh, so I thought maybe there'd be something spiritual that would, would, would help me. So I would sneak out of the house and say I was going to work and I'd go around these shows. And as, as you go around the show, everyone's giving you a leaflet and saying, thank you, thank you. But no, no, not at the moment. And then I came across uh, Master Shard's store. And as I passed, they said, oh, excuse me, please have, have, have these. And they gave me a book and they gave me a CD. And I thought, wow, book and a CD. Thank you. Tell me a bit more. So they just explained a little bit. I said, thank you, put it in my bag. And they said, play the CD. If you don't read the book, play the CD. It will change your life. So I said, thank you, thank you, as I was trying to get away like you do in these events. And I got home and uh, I opened my bag up. And as you do, lots of leaflets, you, you recycle them. But then I had this book and a CD. I thought, I can't recycle these. And I looked at it. So I put it on my bookshelf. And I had this CD, and I thought, well, they said play it. So I was going to work. I was actually commuting for about an hour every day, back and forth. So uh, and I'd get up in the morning, and lots of tasks to do, quite stressed, monkey mind, very, very busy. So I started playing the CD and throughout the journey. By the time I got to the office, I thought, hang on a minute. I feel, <laughs> I feel quite calm. I feel quite good. Uh, this is strange. So I started using it every day. And then this CD alone, it was the Love, Peace, Harmony CD, the love song, was changing how I felt every day, morning and night. So what happened was then the following year, again, I sneaked out to go to the Mind Body uh, Soul Show, and I went to see them. And I said, oh, my experience was, you know, and they said, yes, there's much, much more. So I thought, Great. Sign me up to a course, an intro course. Let me know um, what else I can learn from you. And that's really when my journey started with, with, with Master Sharp. And uh, as I went to the courses, they started to expand my awareness. I then realized just how important the Love, Peace, Harmony song was, the love song. You know, that it carried such high frequency and vibration that it would actually change your whole vibration within yourself each and every time you listen to it. But then as I went to the courses, with my background of chasing the power notes and winning, winning the contract, I then heard so much sacred wisdom. And one of the things which was very powerful for me was um, they mentioned the purpose of life was to serve. And I thought, well, what, what does that mean? And they said, well, to make people happier and healthier, uh, through your thoughts, actions, activities, and speech. And, and I thought, really? I thought the purpose of life was to just chase the pound notes and get really nice stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and I, realized, 
<laughs> and I did. I did think that that was it. You know, you you got you you became successful, had nice stuff, and that was the purpose of life. And you you know spread it around your family and friends. But when I saw this, purpose of life was to serve. I thought, hmm. And I thought, well, it's not just your family. You know, purpose of life to serve everybody, even people you don't know. And I thought, hmm. That is interesting. <laughs> it sounds so obvious. <laughs> but at the time, it changed my mindset. And I thought, okay, that's, that's, that's really good. Um, but then I thought to myself, and this is how the journey is so good. Then I thought to myself, well, what if you get it wrong then? What if you're not making people happy and healthier some days? And then there was a forgiveness practice. So you're able to, to forgive everybody you've hurt. And then, you know, ask for forgiveness from everybody that you've hurt and then forgive everybody uh, who have hurt you. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. So we've got the purpose of life is to serve them, the forgiveness practice. And then it was the gratitude um, where you should be grateful for everything you have, you know. Uh, you shouldn't be, you should be present looking at all the things you have, not looking at everything you don't have. And that was a very powerful piece of wisdom um and and then the next thing came out it was service where i said the purpose of life it just mentioned that was to serve and to serve you know was to to chance was to volunteer without getting paid and that was a noble concept as well for me because i don't think i ever did anything without getting paid so uh, uh so yeah so volunteer without getting paid so i i, I helped uh, at, at the centre, then donate to worthy causes or, or areas where they suffered uh, through tsunamis or any other natural disaster, and then also to make people happier and healthier. And this theme was coming through, coming through, coming through. And then I was introduced to bowel calligraphy, and this is a one-stroke calligraphy. And I was taught that if you trace this calligraphy, it was such high frequency, such positive energy, that it would then boost your energy and create a positive field within yourself, clearing blockages and negative thoughts and, and will pave the way to making your life much smoother, not just in a business sense, but also in your family and really all aspects of your life. And I thought, wow, that's great as well. So the reason I'm sort of saying all these things is that I learnt all these things, but I was just filing them. <laughs> I was learning, and I was just filing them, saying, that's amazing. And they were like just sitting on a bookshelf. And then one day I decided that I would use them in my business. Okay, not just learn them, but I would use them in my day-to-day -day business. So I started to introduce them. And whilst my businesses were fairly successful, they were sort of run on the old style of winning contracts, competing, paying people <laughs> the lowest possible pay you can, you know, and all those sort of concepts that generate profits for maybe uh, more selfish business people. So I decided that what I'll do is I'll change. I wouldn't just learn about these these, these sacred teachings, I'd put them into practice. So within my business, I started to think, I know what I'll do. I will use the purpose of life to serve to make people happier and healthier. I will serve my clients and I will serve my team members, my staff. So I started to connect with my clients much more. I started to talk to them and you know, really understand who they were, what they needed and try to fully adapt to help them, understand the targets they were under, and therefore I could run my business to serve them, to achieve not just my goals, but their goals as well. So that was point one. That's the first thing I brought in. And then I decided to serve my, my staff. And that really is, really care about them, talk to them. I know this sounds obvious, uh, but it isn't always obvious. I really care about them, listen to them, involve them in the business and what we were doing. Um, realize that 
some of the contracts I had were quite profitable. So to actually remunerate them at a higher level, because without them, I couldn't actually serve my clients the way I, 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 I did. And then create a lot more harmonious team because they were talking to each other. And the one thing I found with doing that, not only was it a much happier environment, uh, my clients were much closer to me, um, but I found that my team wanted to do what I wanted them to do. <laughs> so it wasn't really a case of me telling them what to do and tracking them. I started noticing that they wanted to do what I wanted them to do. And they were happy doing it. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. And it's the same with the clients. I found that they were communicating much more with me. They were giving me more work. They were giving me, um, in a way, more confidence that what I was doing was achieving their goals rather than my goals. So that was the first thing I brought in. And I found, I found that change so much because what I found is that I had so many less daily problems. Okay, so these daily problems that used to crop up, used to make me go off track, had to sort of apologize or rework or revisit, redo things. Suddenly, there were much less of those. We were much more productive. And we were not revisiting everything constantly, which means we weren't having to go to our clients and say, well, we've made a bit of an error, we're just putting it right. Everything seemed to flow. And now it's through serving the clients and the team and the team members. But also within the service, I was doing forgiveness practice as well with them. So <laughs> I, was, I was doing a forgiveness practice with the clients and, and the team members. But then I started to trace calligraphy every day uh, for the business. And that was, that was a step change for me, a massive step change. Uh, by tracing calligraphy, you know, you're, you're taking this field of positive energy and it's, it's filtering through you into your business. And I started to see, uh, but by using all the practices, but by tracing calligraphy as well as the forgiveness and the serving, I started to notice customers, new customers were finding us. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. I'm not even going out to find them. They were coming to us. And when they were coming to us, they wanted to buy our services, our products, at a higher value. So I was <laughs> obviously saying, well, it's, you know, it's just price. And they'd go, yeah, that's great. <laughs> so I thought, wow, that's incredible. But with the more profit margin I made by using the teaching, I went back to my clients and I said, you know what, I can, I can pay more for this with you because we had regular sessions we were building up this trust i can pay you more i was still making more than what i was before but now i was sharing this extra profit we were making by new customers finding us that we weren't even looking for or going out to look for pretty much through chasing i think the calligraphy uh, and also the other practices of forgiveness and the gratitude and the and the, the Love, Peace, Harmony song and, and the service. But then there was one other thing which came out. And again, this, I, I, other businessmen will, will, will find this, I'm sure. We received from one of our clients, and they're billion, multi-billion pound clients. They gave us some stock, which was untraceable. Untraceable. And we knew that it was clearance stock. So we sold it. We sold it for something like 10,000 pounds, which would be about $13,000. And my old self could have said, <laughs> amazing, what a windfall gain that was. <laughs> $13,000, we'll just keep it. But I thought the purpose of life was to serve, the forgiveness practice I was doing, the gratitude, you know, all of you know, the, the sacred wisdom and teachings were telling me, no, tell your customer. Tell them they made a mistake, get them to invoice you. 
And my old self was almost going, no, 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 you don't want to do that. <laughs> Take the money and buy something else nice. And I then thought, no, I'm following these teachings. These teachings have changed my life, uh, my personal life. Now they're going to change my business life. So I asked them to bill me. And they billed me for $13,000 or £10,000. And I just left it at that. You know, I thought no more. I just thought I did the right thing. Now, some of your listeners might say, well, that's obvious. You just be honest. But sometimes in business, it isn't always quite as, as straightforward for everyone. So I left it. And then 12 months later, I always have to go every two years for a competitive tender uh, with this multi-billion pound organization uh, to um, retain my work, retain my contract. So I went up, I presented to procurement and all the people in the room, and they uh, they called me back for a second time. And, and for those who don't know, that's a good thing to go back a second time. So I went up and they said to me, they said, oh, congratulations, you've, uh, you've retained your work. And I thought, oh, amazing, fantastic, thank you very much. But then they said something else, very powerful. I was only having part of the pie. And they said to me, they never, ever use a sole supplier. But on this occasion, you, Richard, can have the entire pie. You're going to, you can have the entire work that we have. And we're going to give it to you as a sole supplier. I thought, wow. I said, thank you very much. But can I ask why you've made that decision? And they said, and said to the account manager, and he said, my relationship with you throughout the, the, the length of the contract has got better and better. You understand what we need. You understand what, I, what, what, uh, what I'm trying to get, and you're trying to help me get to those points. So now through the service side. But secondly, he said, 12 months ago, we gave you stock which was untraceable. And he said, you bang us up and asked us to invoice you. And he said, that and building this relationship to me where we have the utmost trust, you have the utmost integrity, you're going to have everything. And I went, I was just, it was just staggering. You know, I've been six years with this client, never ever won anything more than my, my, uh, my portion. And now I have the entire contract as a sole supplier. And this entire contract is significantly more than the £10,000, $13,000 that I could have potentially kept. My old side self may have done that, but with the teachings, the wisdom, the purpose of life, the forgiveness, the gratitude, the serving, the calligraphy, just drives you to run your business in a different way. And now, since doing that, my business is 60% bigger last year than what it was the year before. So I've seen incredible growth, fewer problems, uh, a more harmonious team. I, I, well, I used to work 10 hours a day. I'm probably in that business now. I'm probably there six hours a day. But then that gives me the opportunity to serve much more as this teacher role where I can also take this, this amazing wisdom, these amazing practices of Master Shard and share them with others. So I hope just that in itself, for any, any, any of your listeners there, can see how I've come from very much a business, uh, a win, 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 chase the pound notes at any expense, to one where I've really changed my business. You know, the clients, the team, the way we operate, you know, the, the forgiveness, the gratitude, the, the serving the customers, and also tracing the most powerful calligraphy that, you know, you could ever, ever uh, have in your hand. So, uh, so all I've got is just amazing experiences and stories to share. And uh, I, I, hope, I, hope, I hope this has come across the way I hope it, it should do. <laughs> um, and I hope your listeners appreciate some of the things that's happened to me in my, my business. And maybe they can learn from them too. Well, that was fantastic, Richard. Um, it, it truly demonstrates how you can transform your business and
And the more you apply the spiritual principles, how everything flourishes. That's, that was a word that came yeah. to my mind, was everything flourishes. When you don't you don't lose, you just it, it, it multiplies exponentially. Yeah. So so let me uh, bring uh, Emmerich in, and uh, Emmerich, you also have such a, a inspiring and fascinating story and journey. So share with us the the journey you have been on and how you have been able to take these tools, these spiritual tools into very traditional corporate environments and bring about greater healing and harmony and transformation. Yes, absolutely. Um, it was, first of all, a pleasure to, to meet with you in Toronto and, uh, and share, indeed, some uh, of the wisdom and, and knowledge of, uh, of Master Shah. So my journey started... Uh, in to, around 2005, when I came to to London as a business consultant, and at this time of uh, of my life, I I was quite uh, successful in the way that I I had you know clients, uh, increasing rate, uh, traveling quite a lot throughout Europe, and and at the point of time around 2007, um, a bit like um, uh, Richard mentioned. In terms of when you you have flourishing, in terms of material uh, things in your life, I had the question: but what is it all about? And actually, when you reach that stage, without being a millionaire, but you reach that stage of uh, being full materially, I came to ask me: but what is basically the purpose of life? And um, and applying so I came across some uh, incredible books uh, such as the secret applying the power of visualization emotion bringing also tangible uh, things in our life which is quite important indeed for you know to be comfortable and to be in a way happy later on in 2009 I came across the book called power the power of now of uh, Eckhart Tolle which brought to me the importance of uh, observation and also uh, bringing us to to the question of who who are who are we and especially from a business point of view you know like being successful but stepping back observing yourself and asking you but why you are doing what you are doing and uh, and later on in 2015 um actually when my my wife we were at home in London, and my wife had uh, a very painful uh, neck uh, neck pain and also back back pain. And after a few weeks of painkillers, the pain was still there. After massages, the pain was still still there. And uh, and actually, I came also across uh, a, a, a Facebook uh, advertisement from a friend of mine. I mean, we grew up together in the Caribbean, and highlighting how everyone can heal and transform himself. And in this case, it was from a health point of view. So I decided to pick up the phone, call my friend in, in Toronto, actually, Jill, and, uh, and ask him whether he could explain us more about that. So we, we pick up the phone a few, a few days later, and, uh, and Jill explained us how um, everyone can use Master Shah techniques in order to transform his life, physically, mentally, but also from a business point of view. At this time, my, my wife received uh, what we call a blessing. So it's like you know, someone making a prayer online uh, remotely. And uh, and on the, at at the moment she couldn't feel an improvement, but two days later, indeed, after maybe three weeks of pain, she she felt the pain was released, which brought me to to actually collect and, and buy a, a book from Master Shah to know more about the wisdom, the knowledge. How is it possible to do to do that? And uh, as uh, as Richard mentioned, you know some great practices about gratitude, about uh, something he mentioned about Tao calligraphies or Chinese calligraphies. So so what it is, it's 
basically one stroke calligraphy which help you to to meditate but it's beyond meditation it's a way to connect to a message it's a way to to connect to the message of gratitude of love of um, of forgiveness forgiveness for instance so so actually being uh, around this knowledge of of master Shah, i started to to basically apply apply some techniques uh, starting with forgiveness uh, being in a, you know, from a, a consulting background, I used to work with consulting firm. I used to, I started my career with uh, the consulting firm Ernst and Young, and and then later on, as a self-employed, I was also supporting other other firms. And what I realized is the amount of or the level of stress within the organization. And no real way to to help people to cope with it. Basically, the way uh, someone will cope with it is basically through mimetism. So you see someone else doing more and more and more and basically cope in a way you may not know, but you just try to replicate. And uh, and actually bringing those forgiveness practice into my life has helped me a lot to deal with very stressful and uh, and sometimes very high pressure environment. I have uh, one example in mind which happened last year where I I, I was supporting a client to implement uh, a project related to data protection. And for some reason, uh, I you know I have been in touch with different people, different stakeholders within the organization, including an HR director, and, and you know, um, generally supporting their team to, to, to do better on this project. Um, I learned later on, but in a very tough way, that I was not supposed to do so. And using very, you know, difficult words uh, over the phone, I was in a situation where, you know, I could not really do anything else, at least at this time, but just meditate. Meditate on on the phone, bringing that, you know, concentration or that focus inside me to find the resource, to listen very peacefully, and just to respond uh, very calmly to to the project uh, manager uh, at this time, so it happened during maybe five to ten minutes with you know quite intense and, and tough uh, I would say reaction on, on the other side of uh, of the phone, and I was quite passive in a way, quite calm. And when I came back to my desk, because I had to leave actually my desk, it was quite intense. When I came back to my desk, I said, "Really, Emery, you did manage to." To deal with this situation in, in such a way, calm, way, calm, in a calm, uh, with calm, and needs uh, can you form to uh, let me to leave the organization the same things, but in respect, not really work in the general condition. Uh, uh, Emmerich, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in because something has happened to the line. So I'm going okay. to ask you to. Well, say something. Just continue on. Maybe it's cleared up. No. I'm going to ask you to, to um, call back in. Yeah. Okay, because it's, it's gone wonky on me. Okay, so just just hang up, call back in, and, and we'll continue, okay? Okay. Okay, good. So, because we don't want to miss any of these conversations. So, while we're waiting for uh, Emmerich to come on board, um, you know, I found your story so inspiring, Richard, because it's it, it, it's this true experience of when you come from your heart and you serve others, you you receive you know uh, immense an, immense benefits back you know, far greater than what you expected. It's such a spiritual principle, which is a, a great theory, but you actually experienced it. You know, it was a living example and, and an inspiration for all of us listening how 
you know, the universe returns to you. When you're living according to caring and serving and being honest, forthright and forgiving, then your life moves in greater harmony. It's incredible to me. Oh, Richard, you know what? You better, you better um, call back in too, because something's happened to our line. And okay. We have that same distortion as Emmerich. Call back in. Okay. So what? What I, um, what I want to say while I'm waiting for, um, from Emmerich and Richard to come back on, is that. Um, I, I've been watching a documentary about the country of Bhutan. I don't know how many of you have ever heard of Bhutan. About 600,000 people live in Bhutan. It's nestled between India and China. And um, they are a Buddhist country. And their whole philosophy of life in Bhutan is Buddhist in nature, which means it's to serve others. It's to serve others. And so they're taught from the time they're born in this culture that the the purpose of life and the way you really receive your your happiness is to serve others. So this is, it's a it's a it's a quality, it's a culturally instilled uh virtue and and value. But what's interesting to me about Bhutan is that when they surveyed the people there, they found a 97% uh, happiness. Uh, you know, a, a, a 97% of the people experience themselves as being happy, as being happy. And why? You know, and it's because they're living a culture that values nature, that is one of gratitude, that is recognize the purpose of life is to serve. To serve others, to to serve with 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 love, and um, it, I, I think it's quite astounding. It's probably one of the purest uh, places in the world that really embodies this culture of Buddhism, of spirituality, and people are happy. They have a gross national happiness. Uh, assessment. They have a minister of happiness. They see their purpose of life is to experience happiness and it comes by following those values and virtues of kindness and forgiveness and serving of others. It, it's quite inspirational. And that's, I mean, that's what we're talking about with uh, Richard and Emmerich is how, when you understand this, how to bring this into business, the very place that seems to be the antithesis and how you thrive and flourish, not just with money, but how you thrive and flourish with your sense of well-being, with your health, with your joy of life, because you want to live every aspect of your life and all the days of your life in that place. So um, so that's what we're talking about here, how you can transform the the work environment, which is often the most difficult one to bring these values into, but how it can be done and how it transforms everyone and everything. And you receive even more than what you give. So you guys back? Yes, I am. I'm back. Can, can okay, you, you, sound, you, you, you sound good. Okay, so Emmerich, um, why don't you just back up a little bit from where you were and, and, and then continue to share what you were saying. So where did us. you lose me, actually? Well, um, you were, uh, I'm just trying to think of where we were. You were, um, well, you were talking that, about, go ahead. As a project manager, I was dealing yes, with. Yes, 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 after you came back to your desk, yes. Oh, yes, and. Yes, and at this time, coming back to my desk and realizing, wow, Emmerich, how did you manage to do it? <laughs> but you did it. And how did I manage to do it? Everyone can do it in a way, you know, of practicing meditation, but a specific type of meditation, which is just been brought to my life uh, through Master Shah, Dr. Master Shah, is forgiveness practice. So forgiveness practice is a way to to visualize, to make what we call an invocation, to call upon the soul of someone, to you know communicate and make some some forgiveness. And 
and and during the practice a, a, a chant some very positive uh, mantra so so yeah that that was you know something which happened to me quite recently and more interestingly, it helped me to stay within the organization. So initially, I had a contract of three months, which has been ex- extended to to six months. Uh, it has been, you know, with ups and downs, but um, essentially those kind of techniques, again, like we are talking about meditation. When you think about uh, why meditating, uh, meditate is a way to, to connect to ourselves. That connection brings an awareness. And if you want to, to transform, that awareness can lead you to the transformation that you would like to. So a uh, question is, can you transform yourself without, being, without having that awareness of yourself? So meditate helped me quite a lot to understand myself, to observe myself, and the practice from Master Master Shah helped me to bring things into practice. Usually quite, you know, I'm from a Catholic background. We are used to, you know, go to the church, go to some, you know, specific gathering and listen to some great, you know, I've been to a, a christening recently in Martinique and heard some great, 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 great uh, inspiration, great sentences, you know, great principles. And when it comes to how do you apply it, this is potentially the next, um, the next, um, I would say, challenge or difficulty, and especially in cooperation. So how do you cultivate the unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, or or just gratitude in in a place where things may not be so easy, easy from a relationship point of view, and easy from also a recognition point of view. So, so again, those you know, such practice like forgiveness, gratitude helped me, helped me, helped me quite a lot. And and recently, so since last year, I had the opportunity to to bring actually some of Master Shah's uh, practice and techniques to corporations. So what it is about? It's about basically helping employees to First of all, relax. And relaxation comes also with the meditation. Secondly, to harmonize. Harmonizing, we are using a type of Tai Chi movement, tracing calligraphies, allowing you to, to move the body and to also connect with a message. We mentioned gratitude, message of gratitude, message of light, message of love and more. And finally, um, energizing. And we use uh, body tapping um, as per the traditional Chinese medicines, uh, using the fist or, or you know, hands to tap on specific acupuncture points of the body to nourish and to stimulate the energy flow inside, inside the body. So such practice help not only the employee who would like to find inner joy, inner peace, help him or her to manage better stress, but also meet with the employer's expectations by energizing people. So I had uh, uh, one client asking me, but Emory, I'm, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I'm fine for you to come to, to bring well, well-being classes to my, to my uh, corporations, but I want people to be to be more you know proactive, more active. I don't want people to fall asleep. So I said yes, uh, don't worry because we have we I mean we we have a specific type of meditation combining relaxation, harmonization, and also boosting your energy. So I'm very glad to to be to be on that uh, on that journey. Um, very glad to to have uh, met you, uh, Dr. Cheryl, and and also and also Richard, uh, enabling us basically to to unite, to combine, you know, different techniques, and and also to communicate. What I uh, really uh, like, and I will finish on that with Master Shah's uh, techniques and knowledge, is it was for me a way to combine 
everything that I have learned before from different sources, from different people, from Greg, Greg Braden, um, The Secrets, and more, Eckhart Tolle, and actually bringing that into oneness. Oneness, which I really connect to as well, indeed, because it's important that everyone and each of you connect with a specific type of practice, uh, which is uh, very creative and and flexible, and this is what I I love uh, I love to do. Well, that's inspiring because you're you know taking these practices and putting them into an environment where people don't have a clue and um, find it all very you know certainly new, if not strange, but introducing in a way that really addresses the the key needs of people, which comes down to stress. And people feel so stressed and just so frazzled and disconnected, and 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 all you're doing is giving them a way to to be more at peace and to create more healing and peace of mind. So we we have about five minutes left of our interview. Can you believe it? it went so quickly. So Emric, do you want to do just a simple little gratitude meditation for? my listeners that people hopefully will follow and, and practice in their lives. Yes, absolutely. I will be delighted to do so. So, let's sit up straight wherever you are, <clears throat> bringing both hands on your abdomen, closing your eyes and starting to visualize beautiful golden ball inside your lower abdomen. And then I'll guide you to make, to do an invocation. The invocation will allow you to connect with every cell, DNA, RNA of your body, soul, heart, mind, and body, in order to express gratitude. So please repeat silently. They are the soul of my entire body, spaces, organs, cells, cell units, DNA, RNA, my entire being, including my mind, heart, and body. I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. I am extremely grateful to speak to you on that day. Could you please connect with the frequency and vibration of the gratitude in order to help me to nourish more gratitude into my life and help me to transform challenges into blessings. Thank you. Can you take a deep breath in? Still visualizing that beautiful golden ball in your low abdomen and you breathe out. And I'm going to chant mantra in Mandarin which will be... Yeah, in Mandarin and English, we are going to connect with the greatest gratitude. So silently, you chant along with me. Da ya da na, da ya na na, da ya na. Greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude, greatest gratitude. And you feel that gratitude nourishing you, nourishing you head to toe, skin to bone. Shining that beautiful light within you.
And I would like you to connect now with a specific reason to be grateful. You could be grateful for your job, for the project you are working on, but simply grateful to be on that call, grateful to have two legs, two arms, your head to think, your eyes to see. And you say to yourself, to your entire body, I am very grateful for everything that I have. I am very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you visualize your entire body radiating light, a beautiful light helping you to connect with the frequency and vibration of the greatest gratitude. And you take a deep breath in. You breathe out. And we close the practice by saying ha, 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 ha means good job, great job in Mandarin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are going to thank all our body. I'm very grateful. My entire body spaces inside my body, DNA, RNA, my mind, heart, for this practice. Please kindly return and rest. And the practice is closed. Oh, that was lovely, Emmerich. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful way to complete this wonderful conversation with my guest today, Richard Rogers, Emmerich Vissimol. I want to invite people to go to uh, the website, Dr. Shaw, D-R, Shaw, S-H-A, dot com, if you want to learn more. The song, Peace, Love, and Harmony is there. It's also my theme song on the show. And you can learn more practices. There's all sorts of chanting, free chanting. There's all sorts of daily communications. It's um, a wonderful place to be inspired because, as Richard and Emmerich have shared with us today, if you apply simple, simple spiritual practices into your daily life, miracles will happen. So I want to thank you both for being with us today. It's been such a pleasure all the way from London, Richard Rogers, Emmerich de Simol. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it was absolute delight. Thank you, Dr. Sherrill. Thank, thank you, Dr. And, Sherrill. And also, also thank you to Master Shah. Without him, we couldn't be where we are today. Absolutely. Thank exactly. you, Master Shah. And and to thank you, if it wasn't for all my listeners, I wouldn't be able to be here today as well. So I so appreciate having you here with me. I hope you'll be visiting every Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. But go to Dr. Cheryl Silman or to my Facebook page, What Women Must Know, so you can get all of these shows. And put this little gratitude practice into action and let me know how it goes. So until next week, peace, love, and harmony to you all. Bye for now. <laughs>